You know what, Bobby? He didn't even believe Jesus ever lived. But he was, you know, he would go to church every Sunday, doesn't believe in God, doesn't believe in Jesus. It's all a religion to him. He'd do the water thingy, you know, and he'd see the incense and smell it and all these really things that they liked, but it meant nothing. He had no relationship with God. He didn't even believe it. He existed. How many people are practical atheists where they're going through the motions for various reasons? Who knows what kind of reason they have? They come to church because they want to meet the right guy, the right girl, the right business partner, the right social setting, but they don't even believe in God. And Jesus is really... By the way, Jesus, you know how tactful Jesus is? Oh, did you ever notice this? He, you know, we've got these people that are, that are being very critical of Jesus, and Jesus says very nicely, he says... Isaiah was right about you when he prophesied about you, you hypocrites. <laughs> you're hypocrites. You know, you know, you're playing the part of the actor. You know, that's where that word hypocrite comes from, right? It, it's a Greek word for that one who would play the part of an actor. And so you get up here and you're playing the part, but you're not living it. And I'll use myself as a, an illustration. And, it, and, and as I use this illustration, it's going to be very convicting to me. If I get up here and I preach about how we should live as Christians, but then I go and have no intention of living that? I'm an absolute hypocrite. I'm just up here acting for you. And that is so wrong, Jesus is saying. He's saying to these religious leaders, you're just a bunch of actors. You care more about your rites and your rituals than you do a relationship with God and with other people. Do you know all the different laws that these uh, religious leaders had? I mean, this doesn't even touch the hem of the garment. They had all kinds of laws and rules and silliness. You know, what is the one, um, the one command of the Ten Commandments that you, you, know, you can't work on? Well, how's that go? Thou shall what? Honor the Sabbath day. Okay, Herb, you picked it out, so what does that mean, though? How do you honor the Sabbath? And, of course, it says that, you, you know, you won't work on the Sabbath, right? First of all, what day is the Sabbath? Sabbath is day in Jewish time. Yes, in Jewish time. Sundown, Friday night. Friday night. Yes, it has to be three stars, you see. Not two, not one and a half, three. Okay, now he's even beginning to elaborate. See, because we know what the law says, that you're to honor the Sabbath and you will do no work on that day. And keep it holy. And keep it holy. So, what did they do? They began to define then for you what that meant. It means, for instance, Ryan, those sandals you're wearing, you can't wear sandals. Oh, I thought you were wearing sandals. You can't wear sandals on the Sabbath day. You know why? Because as you walk along, you may have a nail that's loose and it may drag on the ground and you're plowing. Plowing is work. So you have violated the Sabbath day. Here's another one. If a wall should fall on a person on the Sabbath day, uh, you have, you're able to go and remove enough of the debris uh, to see is it a Jew or is it a Gentile? If it's a Jew, then you can go ahead and keep doing as much as you need to get them free. And you can only give them enough first aid and until such time as they're, they're going to have their life saved. You know, if it's just a broken arm, no big deal. We can wait till Sunday or Monday, you know. But if it's a Gentile, you just leave them there. You don't do it anymore. That's it. Do you see what I'm saying? And you, can, you ought to get online, you ought to study about this, this importance of rights. And rituals over relationships with God and with people. And, and, and do we do those kind of things? Oh, I pray that we don't. But it's so easy to begin to say, oh, you see those guys that are, and gals that are raising their hands like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. Oh, yeah, they're spiritual. But those who don't, they're unspiritual. And we begin to make judgments about those folks. In contemporary churches, in any kind of church, anywhere, you begin to start, oh, you see them, they carry their Bible around all the time. They're at church every Sunday. They're there, as a matter of fact, religiously. 
or they don't show up on Sunday. And we begin to make all kinds of judgments about people and begin to uh, care more about the externals that we see. I used to be a part of a fellowship where if you were going to pass out, we used to pass out the communion supplies instead of come up front you know, uh, and get them. You would pass them out. And, and you went to one church and they said, well, uh, you cannot pass out those communion uh, supplies unless you have a coat and a tie on. Bobby and Shirley, do we remember those days? Bobby says, no, no, I'm too young for that. And, and you know what? There was a couple of churches down south. They had actual coats and ties in supply should you have not, you, you don't have one on today. So if you're going to pass those out, we'll have a coat and a tie for you to wear. Now, they could be, you know, embezzling from their employee. They could be employer. They could be, you know, they could be stepping out on their spouse. They could be a lie, a cheat, and whatever. But as long as they had that coat on and they were wearing that tie, then they were quite religious and they could do it. Focusing on the externals, it is something that by nature we as human beings have a tendency to do. And we need to fight against it. That's what Jesus is battling here. This is what he's dealing with. Uh, the other thing is, the second problem is, oh, you already got to it. Rules over righteousness. It's all about the rules, baby. It's all about the rules over what's really right in our heart. You're wearing the coat. You're wearing the tie. You must be okay. Right? Not necessarily. You know, it's a matter of the heart. And the heart is what's at issue. And Jesus doesn't come in and say, you know what, I'm going I'm to do just a little tweak on your heart here and a little tweak on your heart there and I'm going to make you... No, he says, I want to come in, I want to take out that heart, put it away, and I want to give you a new heart. I love that passage in the Psalms, Psalm 51. Create in me a new heart, a pure heart, O God. Steadfast spirit within me. That's what, that's what Jesus comes in to do. And we're going to talk about that more uh, in next lesson when we begin to talk about this whole idea of what is clean, what is unclean. And that's hard for us to understand. But we're going to look, about, look at the idea of purity. And purity, see, this is, this is wild. Uh, how people, I've got, a, I've got a, uh, another slide. I think it's the next slide. I love this. I just found this this week. A quote by Desmond Tutu. And it says, love is much more demanding than law. Isn't that the truth? You can be so separated from people, don't have to deal with all those problems because you can just deal with the rules, baby. And we can judge who's good and who's bad based upon all the externals. And it's so much easier to deal with law than it is to make a right relationship with someone. Let's go back over into the Sermon on the Mount. You remember that time when Jesus said, hey, look it. And I'm going to paraphrase this. You can go back into Matthew chapter 5 and look at it. But, but I'm going to paraphrase it. Jesus said, look it. Before you come to church and you begin singing those praise songs, you begin lifting your hands to the Lord, you begin eating this communion meal and praying and doing all that, you know, that uh, uh, community worship, and you are not right with someone relationally, he says, forget about that. Go get right with that person first. And then come back and do your rites and your rituals and your worship to God. See, because in Jesus' time, you had a poor person over here, they didn't care about them. You had somebody you had a bad relationship with, don't care about them. I don't have to care about people. But that, yet, they're here bringing their sacrifice before God, and they're practicing their worship, rites, and rituals, and Jesus said, your right is wrong. When you care more about your rules and going through the motions than you do about another human being, the Bible says, God is love. How in the world can you say, I love God, yet I hate my brother? He said, how can you do that? You know your brother and your sister in Christ, whom you've seen. How can you say you don't love them, yet you love God, who you don't see? He said, you know what John said over there in, in 1 John chapter 5? He said, you're a liar. Another one who, who really didn't care about tactfulness, he cared more about truth. He says, you're a liar. The, the truth of God is not in you. Oh, it's so much easier to be judgmental on people based upon the externals and not have to deal with... You can, you can justify your behavior. You can justify this division based upon some technicality rather than to do the harder work which is love calls for and to reconcile a relationship. Jesus said, you go reconcile that relationship, then you come and worship God. Then you come worship Him.